Hey everybody, it finally happened. It finally happened after three years. Los Angeles, the eviction moratoriums that were implemented after the health crisis came out over three years ago have finally expired. Uh, remember, they talked about letting them expire. They renewed them and kicked the can down the road again. Uh, this is out of uh, Planet, Planet Citizen, LA Times, and a few more here. Eviction protections expire in Los Angeles County as evictions rise. Uh, LA's health crisis era protections credited with stabilizing homelessness in the region ended at the end of March. So we're in mid-April right now, so just a couple weeks ago. So we likely haven't seen the fallout really begin yet. But listen to some of these numbers. Some of these numbers are absolutely staggering. Just over three years after they were created to protect vulnerable residents, during uncertain times, elected leaders and local homeless service providers say they're bracing for a wave of evictions across the region after the renter safeguards expire. According to a recent Census Bureau survey, an estimated 246,000, let me say that again, 246,000, that's a quarter of a million almost, uh, 246,000 renter households in the LA area are behind on their rent as of the end of March. Big number, folks, uh, almost a quarter of a million. Um, now, it doesn't mean that all these households are gonna end up getting evicted. Uh, maybe some of them will have landlords that'll work out a deal, that'll uh, you know be more lenient, but uh, that's a big, big number, especially when you consider this other number here. The fear is that the loss of rental protections, including eviction protections, could increase the number of people experiencing homelessness in the county right now they're saying there's only about 69,000 people homeless i say only uh la is a big city 69,000 is a lot of people but think about 69,000 currently homeless and if you've driven through la like i have you've seen a lot of homeless tents tent cities uh skid roads way uh, beyond just skid row or a couple blocks you know it's a, it's a long it's a long uh, drive of seeing tents up there uh, 69,000 now, 246,000 additional households behind on the rent as of the end of March. Wow. So I, I think they're going to have to re-implement this eviction protection because I think it's going to get so bad. But once people are evicted, um, even if they re-implement it, those people are already evicted now that it's actually expired, right? So they're going to have to do something very, very soon. And if landlords want to get non-paying renters out, I mean, sadly, this is sad to say, uh, they're going to have to do it very, very quickly before they re-implement these protections. So obviously the LA area, LA County has big, big problems. If you live up in LA County, you might want to brace for, uh, you know, for a lot of rising crime. If you see that many people go homeless in a short amount of time, you know, let's say just in a few months or even within a year, you know, uh, we already see a lot of these, uh, activities happening where hundreds of people go out and they just, smash grab and, and and loot you know we've seen stories you know out of different cities and even la even before this how bad is it going to be you know after this there's going to be a lot of angry people and uh, a lot of angry a lot of hungry people equals danger but it's gotten worse in a lot of other cities here according to a davidson study evictions increased five fold wow five fold from 2021 to 2022 in Minneapolis and Austin, they more than doubled in Houston, Philadelphia, and New York. So uh, what kind of nightmare are we going to be seeing now in L.A. with so many people now behind on the rent? Nearly a quarter of a million people behind on the rent in L.A. Please let me know what you think about that. Let's get into some other topics here real quick. And I just want to briefly touch on our last video. We talked about a couple or a person that called into the Dave Ramsey show saying they almost had a million dollars in debt. Now, many of you commented on that video, and I really appreciate that. Uh, a few of you disagreed with me. I said these people should just file bankruptcy. Um, a couple of you said, no, bankruptcy is a cop-out. Um, it's not the moral thing to do. Well, you know, I agree with you that I don't like bankruptcy. I don't like the thought of people running up a bunch of debt and then just discharging it. You know, it, it encourages irresponsibility, in my opinion. But what about someone that has medical bills and um, is going to be under a lifetime of debt because of an emergency operation or something like that after a car accident? So you're going to put someone in a lifetime of debt servitude over one 
car accident. You know, maybe it wasn't even their fault. Maybe a, a drunk driver smashed into them and uh, you're going to put somebody in a lifetime of debt servitude because of that. You know, we know the, um, the cost of medical is outrageous, right? It could really run up quickly. I mean, you're in the hospital for a few weeks and you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, easily, you know? So, uh, you know, the fact that we shouldn't be able to discharge debt, you know, that's uh, you have to change the bankruptcy law there. But some of you said, well, we should allow certain certain types of debt to be discharged, medical debt being one of them. That's a debate right, that, that people need to have. But um, the way that the bankruptcy laws are written now, it does encourage irresponsibility. It encourages people to go out and just spend whatever, go on vacations, travel, run up debt, knowing that they can just discharge the debt. So I do believe it's being abused. And maybe those uh, people that called into that show that we talked about in our previous video, maybe they were abusing it. All I was saying was that if you try to pay down a million dollars with a debt and you're not even going to uh, erase the student loan debt that the people that called in there, they had student loan debt as well. That's non-dischargeable. But actually, that's not true either because they just discharged a lot of student loan debt here uh, recently. And uh, it's right here. NBC News just a couple days ago, uh, Supreme Court allows six billion dollars in student loan debt settlement. Now, some are saying that this could open the door to uh, a mass uh, student loan forgiveness. So while you can't discharge it in bankruptcy for the most part, uh, they're looking at other ways to get this debt uh, discharged. So think about that. So someone that voluntarily um, took out a loan to go to school, to go to college, uh, they may be getting their discharge, their, um, their student loan debt discharged but you're not going to allow someone that has a medical emergency bill to discharge that debt, right? So you got to think about that. Uh, pretty crazy. A um, couple of you asked about, are my hands really big? <laughs> uh, no, they're not that big. When I do this, it looks really big. That's just because they're by the camera. But put it back on my face, not that big. Now, a couple of you out there in viewer land have said that I need to um, just stop focusing on bad news. And just have more fun and uh, maybe goof around a little bit. Okay, well, let's do it. Ready? Ooh. Okay, is that what you want from this channel? <laughs> All right, on to some other news here. Uh, Janet Yellen is out there warning about a credit crunch. And we already see that banks have really been um, pulling back on lending, especially smaller and uh, regional banks and community banks. Uh, Janet Yellen says banks may tighten lending. Well, it's already starting to happen. How much more? tightening will they do and what will this mean for asset prices uh u.s news here Yellen yellen says banks may tighten lending and negate need for more rate hike so think about that so loose lending easy money uh, when people can get loans very easily that's inflationary it causes rising prices because then people can go out and buy things that they can't afford and when everybody can get a loan then the people selling these things the car dealers etc don't need to lower the prices, right? It's pretty simple. Loans equals inflation. Loans equals rising prices. People borrowing money equals uh, costs going up. Uh, U.S. Secretary Yellen says banks are likely to become more cautious and may tighten lending further in the wake of recent bank failures, possibly negating the need for more rate hikes out of the Fed. The consensus is, is that the Fed is going to raise rates, uh, again, a quarter of a percent at the next meeting. Uh, says here, quote, banks are likely to become somewhat more cautious in this environment. We already saw some tightening of lending standards in the banking system prior to that episode, and there may be some more to come. So, uh, unquote. So she's saying that even before the bank failures that happened in March, that uh, tighter lending was already happening because not just the higher interest rates, but uh, banks see the credit, they see the uh, consumers buried under a lot of debt. And when you start looking at these debt to income ratios increasing, well, banks don't have to notice that and they have to be cautious. But now it's going to be even more exacerbated because of the, um, the bank failure. And the state of the U.S. consumer right now is not so good. And now that it's becoming harder to borrow money, you know, people's lifestyles are likely uh, going to change, you know, pretty drastically. A pair of CNBC surveys came out here uh, kind of underpinning this right in here. 70% of Americans are financially stressed. 58% live paycheck to paycheck. Now we've seen these types of surveys before. Some of the other ones are closer to 70%. I believe like 67% was one we reported on a few months ago. 
uh, living paycheck to paycheck, quote, people are worried that the money they've saved won't last and are worried they're going to have to lean more on their credit cards and other sources of debt just to get by, unquote, said Bruce, Bruce McClary, senior vice president at the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Well, leaning more on credit cards now at these interest rates, um, you're not going to last very long financially. I mean, your household budget's going to go uh, through the roof. And now we're seeing uh, gas prices tick back up again here with the rising oil prices. And we're just getting into summer. I think we're going to see $100 plus uh, oil here in just a few months. And uh, we've got the OPEC cuts out there. The OPEC nations are cutting output by millions of, of barrels per day. So that's going to another. Uh, it's going to lead to another inflationary push, I think, for uh, the price at the pump here, right? So everybody, uh, keep stacking, preparing. Uh, inflation is still in the cards, and I'm talking about not just the money printing. I'm talking about the cost of living, uh, because what we're seeing happen right now is not a lot of jobs coming back to the U.S. The dollar is being dumped globally. Um, the world reserve currency, the U.S. dollar is being ditched, uh, countries going outside of the dollar and trading within their own currencies, also implementing things like oil and precious metals into their trades in some cases. Uh, but nonetheless, the dollar is getting dethroned as king dollar. So what's that gonna mean for the US considering we rely so heavily on imports? Um, what if China no longer wants to take US dollars at some point, what are we gonna do? Because we don't have enough manufacturing here to get even uh, a tiny fraction of, of the goods and items you know that we need as consumers. So a lot of things need to change before uh, this danger is done and before we're out of the woods. So I continue to say prepare for things to get worse, not to be a doom and gloomer, but uh, you know that's what I'm seeing here. And uh, you know if you have young ones in your family, if you have kids or even nephews or just young ones, you know uh, you want to have this world start becoming a, uh, to become a more easy place. To get by in but it's becoming more and more difficult as you can see here 70 percent of americans are feeling financially stressed uh it's a lot of people folks even millionaires uh, are reportedly um concerned about the future and afraid to retire and afraid to stop working even with a million dollars put away because it could be gone just like that with the cost of everything folks uh, all right so we're gonna wrap this up here everybody thanks for watching please like comment if you like this channel and we'll talk to everybody very soon bye for now